right, guys. All right, lock, lock in real quick. We're almost, we're almost done, I promise, I promise. So as we jump into our, our final thoughts for tonight, what, what my hope is, what my prayer is for tonight is that uh, what just happened in small groups, that's the beginning of the conversation, that the conversations that were started in there uh, do not end here tonight, all right? The reason why we do small groups, the reason why we do life groups is so that you can, uh, you can have just real, authentic, genuine conversations with other people who are at the same season of life as you, and then also leaders who love you, who care about you, who have more wisdom, who want to speak life in your situation, who want to pray for you. You know, we don't have time to speak to every single point tonight. I don't have time to answer every single question that you may have, but I hope that this is the start of a conversation, and this is why it's important you guys go to life groups. Yeah, Hannah's about it. I love that. So, the, the uh, dictionary defines anxiety, which again is our topic of tonight, as an abnormal and overwhelming sense of apprehension and fear, meaning that you can't have anxiety without first experiencing fear. You know, once, once you fear something, then anxiety sets in after that. They're both things that can cripple us emotionally. You know, when you think about it, there's so many different stress, uh, stressful situations that we have in our life. You know, a lot of you guys just uh, listed them off, you know, in our small group time. You know, whether it's, it's studying for a test. Maybe it's asking someone to homecoming. I know you guys got homecoming coming up. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's picking a college. Maybe it's, it's, it's going from elementary school to middle school. Or maybe it's making the jump from middle school to high school. Whatever it may be, we've all got things that can uh, cause anxious thoughts in our lives. You know, how many of you guys would say, just by a show of hands, life would be way easier if you didn't have anxious thoughts? Uh, pretty much everyone in the room who didn't raise their hand is probably not listening. Uh, now, <laughs> how many of you guys have felt anxious thoughts in your life? All right, again, if you didn't raise your hand, you're probably not listening. Uh, yeah, you know, they're very, they're very real. And if we're being honest, if we're not careful, we can, we can go through life, we can go through these things, and although fear is real, so is the power of God, you know, and, and I know you hear that, you know, for so many of you guys who have been going to church for a while, I'm sure you guys have probably heard someone say, you know, oh, God, God is bigger than your problems, and it's really easy to think in that moment, you're like, yeah, you're probably just saying that because you, you don't know what else to say, you know, or how many of you guys have, ha have heard someone say to you, well, just have faith, just have faith. Okay, only Eli. The rest of you guys also not listening or you have a poor memory. I guarantee you that has probably been said to you. And, you know, it, it seems like a lot of times people will say that you're like going through like the worst thing in your life. Like you're just like, you got like the worst anxiety, like the worst depression. Like you're going through one of the toughest things you've ever gone through. And someone's like, well, just have faith and it'll all be better. And you're like, I've got faith. I'm going to knock you out with this roundhouse kick. You know, <laughs> You know, you just want to throat punch them in the name of Jesus when they say that. You know, you're like, what do you mean just have faith? You know, what, what does that even mean? You know, a lot of times people, they have good intentions when they say that. But you hear those things and you're like, I, how is that going to work? You know, a lot of times in the midst of your fear, in the midst of your anxiety, you're probably less focused on having faith. And you're probably more focused on, you know, wondering, you know, d does God even see where I'm at? You know, d does God even care? that I'm going through this, you know, and that's where the haunting of your heart really begins. That's where the, the questions start to eclipse the truth. You know, maybe you, you've wondered, you know, does anyone even know what I'm going through? You know, does, does, does anyone even care? You know, am I, am I ever going to be free of this? You know, is, is this my fault that I'm going through this? You know, do I deserve this? And then those questions that you keep inside and you don't talk about in life group, that you don't surrender to Jesus, they begin to grow, and then those questions begin to turn into statements, and you say, you begin to say things like, you know, I, I'm not enough, I'm never going to be good enough, I'm never going to be set free of this, I deserve this, I'll always be alone, no one would care if I were gone, man, I don't want to do this anymore, and the haunted places of our heart takes over, and we begin to feel trapped in this place, you know, it can feel like a bottomless pit that you can't get out of. But that's the reason why God has empowered us. And I love what Paul says in 2 Corinthians. If we can get it up on the screen, I know we read it in life groups. It says this, We demolish arguments in every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought 
to make it obedient to Christ. And that's like the theme verse for the night. You know, we have to realize that our anxieties are, are, are running, that our fear, that our, that our depression is running in our lives, that, that it is controlling our lives, and we need to take those thoughts captive. And see, what, what the scripture says is God has given us power to be proactive, to take captive those thoughts. Meaning that you can make up in your mind preemptively, I am not going to think those things. You make up in your mind, I am not going to think those things. You make up in your mind, you know, I'm not going to think lustful thoughts in my mind. I'm not going to let bitterness run in my mind. I'm not going to play out imaginary scenarios that are never going to happen that just make me anxious in my mind. I'm not going to think about past mistakes. I'm not going to think mean, angry, hurtful things about that person. I'm not going to think sad things. When those thoughts come in my mind, God has given me the power to take captive those thoughts and, and to submit them to Jesus. You know, you can't just wait for the thoughts to come before you think about how you deal with them. You know, it's like, it's like playing a game for the first time. I was just on the evangel visit this past weekend with a couple of people here in the room, and I was sitting in Chase's room. Some of you guys remember Chase? Rest in peace. No, he's not actually dead, but he, he, he's not in the youth group anymore. I was sitting in his room, and he was playing NCAA football. Now, I haven't played NCAA football in like 12 years, but uh, Eli or Will, one of them, was like, here, take the controller. I'm like, oh, I got this. I didn't know what any of the buttons did, and I just got absolutely destroyed. You know, <laughs> it was bad. You know, I, my character was diving when I was trying to catch the ball. It was bad. I was getting sacked. You know, it's like waiting for the concert to try and memorize the songs that you're singing. You know, you can't wait until the problems come. You can't wait until those anxious thoughts come in your mind before you're like, oh, crap, what do I do? No, you need to be proactive about it. You have to realize, no, no, no. No, that thought's in my mind. No, I made a decision last night at youth. I'm not going to think that. You know, I made a decision when I was reading my Bible. I'm not going to allow those thoughts to take over my mind. That's why we need to take over those thoughts. We need to take captive those thoughts and make them obedient to Christ. Now, what the word obedient here in Greek means is to submit, meaning you submit those thoughts to Jesus. When, when, when you're, you're struggling with those things, when you're struggling with, with anxiety and depression and fear, you submit those things to Jesus. When you lay those things in the hands of Jesus, you no longer have to be afraid of them because you know that God is for you. You know that God will always be with you. You will know that God does have a plan for your life. God does know your situation. It does have an expiration date. There is purpose for your life. 